Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Miss Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I don't know if you saw yesterday's video, but I put up yesterday's video just to kind of give it a, you know, a preview into today's video. So if you missed yesterday's video, I just got the Polar Express train set from Lionel. And what I wanted to do is take my EV3 set and go, hmm, I'm wondering if I can make some type of gate crossing guard for, you know, when cars get up to the railroad tracks, you know, there's the gate that comes down. I was thinking, I bet you I could take some ultrasonic sensors and create some type of, you know, gate crossing for cars. So if you want to see that, stay with me. Hey guys, this is Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for checking out my channel and this video. If you love robotics and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Okay guys, so I'm going to leave you the link um, to that Polar Express train set at the end of this video. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I put together for some type of ultrasonic sensor, seeing the train, activating the gate to come down. Uh, my students have done something like this before, but there really wasn't a real train, but now I have one. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this thing is so big, I can barely get into the shot here. So what do you see before you is going to be um, the EV3 build that I put together here. So it's going to be utilizing two ultrasonic sensors. So the ultrasonic sensor that you see right there, that's going to be the ultrasonic sensor that detects the train coming. So I'll show you the program in a second, but I just kind of wanted to show you what this uh, whole build looks like. And so the whole objective is, is for this ultrasonic sensor to see the train coming. And then when uh, this ultrasonic over here to the left, when that sees that the train has gone by, it'll activate the gate to come up. So I guess I forgot to tell you that this is going to activate the gate, this gate right here to go down. And when this ultrasonic sensor sees that everything's clear, it'll activate the gate to come on up. So let me go ahead and show this to you. So when the train comes by here and this ultrasonic sensor picks that up, it'll cause that gate to go down. And then, you know, the train's going to be coming by this ultrasonic sensor right here. So in the program, I have it where if it sees past the train, so right now my hand is preventing this ultrasonic sensor from seeing past, I believe I set it for uh, 10 inches. So as soon as the train goes by like that, it'll activate the gate to go up, allowing cars to go back and forth. So you're gonna have to just uh, somehow get it out of your mind that all these cables are here. That's the only issue I had um, with distance is being able to get those 20 inch cables to go far enough and then you know I have it looped um, so that when the train keeps going by it'll keep activating that gate to go down and then when the train is going by and it eventually makes it on by it'll activate it to go up so it's uh, one of those things where yeah you almost wish you had a wireless sensor because the car is going to be going through right here. So this would be the make-believe street or road that this gate is preventing the car from getting hit by the train. So let me go ahead and show you the program in case any of you want to try this out. And then I'll take you to my train set to see how this really works. Okay, I'm on my Lego Mindstorm software here. And believe it or not, this is the program. This is it. So let me go ahead and show you what's going on here if you wanted to duplicate this for your own sake here. So I have everything inside of a loop so that, you know, when the train keeps going around and around, um, this thing will just keep looping. So you can see the two different, I, I forgot to tell you this, I was actually using an infrared sensor. Somehow my other ultrasonic sensors were not um, picking up distance for some reason I, tr I tried different cables and it was it was still not registering so I decided to use my infrared instead so here we go I have this ultrasonic plugged into port 4 
And this is set for if anything, if it sees anything less than 12 uh, centimeters away. So if it sees anything less than 12 centimeters away, it's going to activate the gate to come down. And I put a weight block in here because I want to give the train some time to get over to the next sensor. Um, if I did not have this in here, this would automatically make the gate go back up, and I don't want that. So I'm giving the train six seconds to get over, and that's that's more than enough time. It's giving the train six seconds to get over to the infrared sensor. So here's what's going on with the infrared. Right now I have it for greater than, and this is set for, I believe that would be 54 centimeters, but I'm not sure. Um, with that one, I'm not sure what the um, unit of measure is. Oh, sorry about that. And so when it sees over 54, it's going to activate the gate to go up. So you can notice that this is just the opposite of that. And then, like I said, it's looped. So if it's, you know, it's just going to keep going round and round. Uh, but this is the neat part here is that when the train's going by, it does not see over 54. But once that last car goes by, that should be over the 54, and then it should activate the gate to come up. And that's it. That's the program. So let's go ahead and take you down to my Christmas tree where the train is already set up to see this in action. So wasn't that cool? I just love how you can take an everyday thing like a train crossing and turn it into something that you can kind of mimic with a robotics kit. So that's just something cool that I like to get all of my students excited about. Like, you know, anything from a card shuffler to a railroad crossing guard, just something that, you know, in everyday life, you can just take these things and you can create something that mirrors that in real life. And that's just what I want my students to be able to see because then it gets their wheels turning like, how do I build it? How do I program it? How do I set it all up so that it, you know, looks pretty realistic. So, you know, I encourage you guys to get your EV3, your Spike Prime, whatever set you have, and just be able to explore when you go out in the real world to just be able to, you know, observe these things, you know, like when you go into a store and it senses that you're there and the doors automatically open. I mean, you can do that with a robotics kit. So it's just one of those things where I just love when my students come and tell me, hey, Mr. You know, I, I created a trash can that could, you know, take itself out because, you know, just real world problems 
that, you know, my students are able to just recognize and go, that is something that we can problem solve with robotics. So it's just a cool journey. And I'm glad that you guys are with me uh, to just be able to see all this. So, all right, guys, I am Mr. Hino from Machinos Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.